So I'm very delighted to have with me here at COP28, Anne-Marie Melster. Anne-Marie is the co-founder and executive director of Artport Making Waves, an interdisciplinary curator bringing together art, science and informal education for climate and ocean action, with the goals to contribute to societal change through youth empowerment. She holds an MA in art history, Hispanic Theolo philology and political sciences. So great to see you, Anne-Marie. Yes, great to see you as well. Good morning. So tell us a little bit, uh, firstly, uh, why you're here. Um, I understand you've been just uh, recently in Abu Dhabi, um, connected with, in a sense, with what's happening at the COP. Um, what have you been doing there? Well, first of all, we have been for the first year um, ex been accepted as uh, with an observer status here before visiting the COPs since uh, Copenhagen since 2009. We always uh, partnered with other organizations, other NGOs, and this time it's Artboard Making Waves with an observer status. And I said, if I go to, to Dubai, for us it's important to do advocacy. We have an, a side event here happening on Saturday as well, but also to connect with the local community. So um, I contacted a person I know in Abu Dhabi. She's teaching, she's a professor at NYU Abu Dhabi. And um, we put together a workshop which was called uh, We Are Ocean Arabian Gulf, like an introduction to uh, We Are Ocean Arabian Gulf, which we possibly might do in the future. And we worked with the students there. So they put together a group of students and um, we invited a very um, renowned mar marine bio biologist. He's US American, but he's based here since almost 20 years. John Bird, and we had a conversation about all the uh, topics, challenges, etc., specifically of the coral reefs of the Arabian Gulf. And it was highly interesting, and I worked with the students around the topic how to create a project like We Are Ocean. Like, well, we created this as a program, which is endorsed by UNESCO until the end of the decade, and uh, this program consists of individual projects. So the Arabian Gulf would be one individual project, which we would set up in collaboration, co-creation with the students, the selected students of the university. Mm. And were they excited to somehow be at the nexus of science and art? Did they understand this relationship in a sense? Uh, this is a way of bringing out uh, understanding, but hopefully action as well. Um, a channel in a sense that's a different channel to the classical scientific channel. No. Yeah, it was kind of new to them because they came from different backgrounds. Um, they were they are studying different careers, and of course, when you go to a huge university like N NYU Abu Dhabi, everything is um, very much channeled. But um, the teachers, the professors there, they really try to connect with other disciplines, and uh, the experts I'm working with there, they are really open to those ideas, and the students were really in. Um, inspired so uh, we were a small group because it was a public holiday uh, two days ago in Abu Dhabi but um, there were like uh, artists who are actually uh, coming from the economy uh, from economics who want to become an artist or curator so they already came with a you know with a mixture of backgrounds and some of them they didn't know where to go professionally and they were inspired by this way of working as well understanding that you can work in an interdisciplinary you don't need to be an art curator only focus on art and creating nice exhibitions in huge museums but you can really do something with a real societal purpose mm -hmm. so you're now uh, in in COP, as it were, in COP28, uh, and there is an Oceans Day coming up, um, and you're up to something there with some experts and young people and others. What, what is happening there? Mm. So, um, as we uh, are part, like endorsed by IOC UNESCO for the Ocean Decade, we are an official project since the beginning. We already were part of the preparatory phase before 2021, and UNESCO invited us to host. Um, an event at the Ocean X Pavilion, which is a collaboration between Ocean X and uh, IUC UNESCO, which is in the Zone B7 building, 87, first floor for the ones who are here and, and uh, watching. And um, I brought together um, ocean experts like uh, Martin Fisbeck from Geomar in, in Kiel in Germany. Uh, then we have um, an expert in uh, sustainability and uh, Feminism as well from Germany, Annabel Fernes. I have a young um, scientist and activist from Tanzania on board. 
um, Shamim Wasi, then uh, Elsie Gabriel. She is an activist and very strong in, um, well, she is implemented in several organizations in India and internationally um, from Goa, uh, India. Then I have uh, Francesca Santoro, of course, the program officer regarding ocean literacy. She is based at the UNESCO office in, in Venice. And Gavin Edwards, who is um, uh, a program manager, or program director, I'm sorry, I'm always mix mixing up manager and director, director from WWF, who, had, who was actually um, key to the implementation of their nature positive initiative. Mm. So I want to speak with all of them. I want to have the audience on board from the beginning to speak about the empowerment, the possible and importance of empowerment through interdisciplinary projects specifically youth empowerment, to give them self-esteem and to speak up and to be part of these um, negotiation processes, mm. not as policy makers, not as negotiators, official ones, but really to talk to the politicians, to their local, regional, international, national politicians and speed up the process a little bit. Um, so, uh, Art Port Making Waves, how long has it been around now? Well, we started to uh, implement it in 2005, but officially 2006. Right. And this year, there was a kind of milestone in terms of your work. I see you have this wonderful book here, which you can uh, hold up to the camera. Probably this camera here, actually, this maybe. One in the um, yeah, or the uh, one in the middle, yeah. This is the first book of our series, um, the We Are Ocean series, the We Are Ocean program, which we um, produced. Mm -hmm. And the first project was happening in Berlin and Brandenburg. And uh, so it was actually the most complex one because we were setting up the pro program at that moment. And we gathered all the different voices from the young people who participated, from the scientists, the policy makers, the funders, um, of course, the artists. And um, it needed some time to get everything together. We got funding by the German postcode lottery and we are really grateful to them because it was the first time that they funded a book. They didn't know what was coming out of that, but I think everybody is happy because it really became, mm. it, it turned out as a very good book in German and in English. We always produce the books in the local language in which the project was produced and in, in English, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this uh, captures just the first project or does it capture uh, the further history? No, it's about the first project, yeah? It's about the first project, but of course I took the opportunity to speak about the general history of Artport, of our mm -hmm. vision, of the goals, um, of the whole history of how we created Artport, how we created We Are Ocean. So it's a general overview, but then of course it goes into mm. deep for mm. the project in Berlin mm. and Brandenburg. Will there be at the end of this decade um, on oceans that UNESCO kickstarted um, a kind of evaluation of all these many projects that have happened under this umbrella and, and an assessment of what they may or may not have achieved in that decade of oceans? Um, you mean generally by mm. IOC, UNESCO? Mm. They are doing assessments every year anyway. So they have a control over what is happening. We mm -hmm. have, there are a lot of projects now endorsed and programs as well. So, and it is growing. I, even UNESCO is really surprised and, and in the positive way and overwhelmed about the success because mm -hmm. we started that some years ago to speak about that. I remember in 2018, I had the first conversations with IOC UNESCO and since then it has been speeding up people all over the world and organizations and companies. It's really fantastic. So of course they have to keep track on of everything which is happening, and they do that. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, at the end, I don't know what they are planning for the end, but uh, we are going to have, I'm sure, a general assessment. Okay. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you very much indeed for um, being here with us at COP28, and uh, best of luck with your work. Thank you for having me here. Bye-bye.